Okay, I'm going to join this hourly rapid arena. It's got all sorts of players in there, you know, like master level, you see the national master level type thing. So it's got everybody in there. I'm hoping not to play those type of players. And I think it was it a 10 minute. Yeah, 10 minute rapid play. And it's got an hour and something left. So we'll see how we get on anyway. Let's join. Maybe we can practice the uh, potential value of the move situation that we're currently in. Bring in the logical and creative thinking. Get get some management of those. Try and iron out some of the blind spots. Make sure we're checking the blind spots. And last but not least, actually applying the answer process. And trusting the answer process. Keep it simple, direct to remove pieces from the board strategically and then we should be okay and seeing as it's a 10 minute one it looks like because I've joined late I'm going to be waiting a while oh we're on okay even this match so far then so that's not too bad so just blocking off the pawn and they're taking their time. I was start, starting to think about taking the gambits all the time, but you know, I'm comfortable just developing a piece because when you do take the gambited pawns, you lose tempo in developing a piece. And that's the whole idea behind the gambits in, in a sense. So at least I'm getting to develop my pieces out. Are they in the appropriate positions? Based on my experience, yes, they are so far. So just opening up the dark squared bishop now. I have to be mindful the queen is chomping at the bit to come here to put a check on. But it is easily defendable at the moment. So I'm going to attack the bishop. Usually they go back because they want to open up the rook. So that it's facing here. And he's not done that this time. So I'm going to go and castle. That should be okay. So the queen's come down, always for the b-pawn. So do we lose tempo? I'm not really a fan of it, but I, I do do this move anyway. Somehow they seem to win the smallest of tempo when they do that. Okay, so now he's got two pieces on there. He's got the knight and his queen. I can't take because he's going to take my queen. So that's what I'm saying, that, that loss in that tempo, I feel like I lose something when this happens. And I still fall for it every time. So we're down a pawn already. So we could attack the bishop now because it looks like we've lost whatever it is on this side here. So we're not panicking. We're just going to stick with the um, answer process. Just going to attack a higher piece with a lesser piece. And obviously we can't take this pawn because he's going to get the pawn back anyway. So we're going to take here. So keep it simple. See what other distress we can cause. We've still got two pieces on. In fact, now we've got free protection here. So we can now actually take the pawn. So for a moment, we've got it back. And just um, crunch this pawn here. See if he's going to exchange the queen or not. He's not. And what? Am I falling into a trap here? I'll take the queen for free. That was surreal. Wow, they had us under pressure on this pawn here where we lost the tempo. But then, oh, they've resigned. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. All right, well, what we'll do is do a bit of analysis on that because there are some big cheeses in this. And um, I'm not looking to play through the whole of the arena. Um, when I do arenas, I either play one game or maybe two. Sometimes I'll go up the whole hog, depending on how I feel. But I have had a very busy week this week with chess, as I've explained before. So this might be just the one that I do, <laughs> because um, it, it's a good example of the answer process being used. And that's all really what I'm trying to demonstrate for myself. I'm not on here to try and win tournaments or anything like that. Um... So, push through and blocked here now. So, we developed the knight. 
and push the bishop through so opened up as normal like i say taking this pawn here makes you sort of lose development in your own pieces so we attack there now what did i feel went wrong yes i don't really like doing this maneuver because what i'm doing is i'm protecting this pawn should i just put this on sorry yeah make sure that they're not on yeah that's fine yeah don't really like doing this maneuver because in essence the queen is attacking here but he's just supporting his pawn as well so i don't have another piece that can protect the pawn do i not from my experience sometimes i can let it go because then the queen is on the other side of the board and then we can start ramping over and attack the king we do like that greedy munch aspect but today we went here and showing why it has an advantage because basically when they take here if i took back then his knight will be able to take and he's winning my my pawn for free so that was the sticky wicket so they actually captured so they did win it for free so i don't think that they should have moved their bishop here i think they should have taken the knight here and they would have been still winning i think it should have been this yeah the gauge bars are green because then if i go here then i suppose they continue with the, the capture we can bring this here i'm just playing as a human it's obviously obviously showing that 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 wouldn't be correct for them but that's what I would have pictured as a human player playing. So we attacked here and the computer's saying, Bishop, yeah, Bishop take there. So that didn't change. And then it's saying E4. Oh, leaning on the Bishop. Okay. Right. So yeah, the, that would be quite nice. I can't go any further because I'm playing as a computer. So, right. So, With that pawn maneuver, just that they do they have a pawn? And like I said, cut there because he's got X ray through to my queen, which is a bit shabby. So we're thinking attacking the bishop is a good thing. We did expect it to take, you know, take the knight, but it didn't. He didn't, she didn't. So that gave us an advantage, apparently. So from the evaluation, so we continued attacking. So the idea was just a smaller piece attacking a higher piece, basically relying on the answer concept and just capturing pieces now strategically, just getting it off the board. And then now we can capture. But see the gauge bar, it's not showing that that's a favourable move for us. But I felt it was favourable because we'd got the pawn back and we'd improved our position on the board. I was more imp more interested in actually getting an improved position on the board than actually grabbing the pawn back. And the computer doesn't like the capture, but it's still showing why it has winning, even at this stage, because the queen should be taking the queen. But I think they forgot that their queen was under pressure, so then we could capture, and that's when they resigned. So the smallest of detail, I mean, this was like a 1700, so it's not like small potatoes. Um, even the higher level players or intermediate level players or whatever you want to class them as make these types of blunders, you know, uh, unprotected pieces. And it's a key thing if you're trying to develop and work. I mean, I, I drop pieces uh, quite often. I'm trying to avoid doing that. I'm trying to improve the position on the board, as you can see in the early part of this, this game here. Um, didn't quite play it as correctly as I would do normally, I don't think. I don't think. I just want to go back again because let's see again. So there, there, knight comes through, bishop here, bishop's there. I'm looking to attack the bishop. I would do that there. Now, queens come down. The queen has come down. I have to do something about this pawn. Or I can just take this pawn, right? I take this pawn. Does his queen take this pawn or this pawn? He'll probably take this pawn because he's in on the rook. Yeah. I can then move my knight out of the way. So that's the sort of continuation that I should have been doing. 
simplest, smallest of detail, actually take, because my pieces are now developed. That's a key thing, because we said that we don't usually take this gambit, this pawn for the gambit, because we don't get to develop our pieces. But I think a good lesson learned for me today is my pieces are developed. Now, the only one that isn't really is the knight. The rooks can come later. Look at the opponent. He's got two pieces that aren't even developed yet. So we're up in development. So we shouldn't really worry about this pawn. Just take this pawn off the board. Simple. So that's a very crucial game, actually. I think that's a, an interesting lesson for myself in dealing with the gambits at the right moment, at the right time. 